Start number 34, the Sellers Lach Racing Team Mercedes. Alongside him is uh, Jean Ludovic Foubert, ahead of Cembalo Bazi and Giuseppe Getzi. Netting line, which is coming out of the Parabolica. Start line, finish line, slightly different places. There are the lights on the gantry, and in a moment, then the lights will change to get the race underway as the cars now are released. They blast away, and a good start made by the Toyota on the outside of the front row, also looking to try to make progress. Ivan Jacomi in the Porsche from the second row there, looking for a gap in the middle, but he can't take it. It's Antoine Potti who gets the drag for the race lead. Bailey Voisin finds a gap on the outside line in the first of the orange and blue McLarens as they break for the first chicane. Many ride the curb on the inside in the middle of the pack, though. Are they all going to survive? Does anybody get turned around? This is always real heart in mouth stuff. One or two bounce over the curb, but so far, 30 odd have got through. Nearby there, look from one of the Mercedes that got all crossed up, just about survived but that might have caused one or two people down between the leaders. Ivan Jacoma is in third place still. Bailey Boys in his fourth. And there, the blue BMW to the inside, looking to gain ground. Number 12, that is on through the Valiante Ascari. They come, and again, you can see the way the BOP works to ride to the curve. He's not the wipers on now, Jamie Caroline has, but anyway, he battles through the other side of the chicane. And when he keeps in line, they go once more. Antoine Potti over the line. Joel Sturm, nine tenths of a second back this time. There are the two Mercedes on the inside. Jamie Caroline on the outside line. Xavier Yoveras, they lean on each other. But Jamie Caroline goes through. Yoveras gets forced out wide. All the Audis suddenly arrive on the scene as well there. And it was Xavier Yoveras that was the one that lost out really by skipping over the curb a little bit, which delays the exit speed. And it also means that Marcus Lundstrass goes back ahead of him. The Aston Martin then, Lundstrass number 18 goes through. The blue and white, Fabio Michel, at the chip, looking for a way by. Then you've got Clement Zyler, number 14. Then the BMW of um, Cembal at Basi. So great long train of cars all squabbling here as they come out of the chicane. Through they turn into the Lesmo Benz now. Number 14, Clement Zyler runs wide, digs a trench behind the kerb. That compromises the run off the corner, and it gives now Cembo Lubazi the opportunity to come up alongside him. He's going to go through, I think. And yes, the uh, Borussia Automotive Motorsport BMW goes charging by, but on the outside line. So has he got the work done before the Variante Ascari? The answer is yes, he has. So through goes Bolo Bazi, picks up the place. 26 Porsche, you'll notice, with its uh, spare door adorning the car. Is out of Alexander Hartvig. Find Xavier Joveras. Well, he was ahead of him before he made that mistake, so uh, he has effectively self-penalised by going up the escape road. He's lost a couple of places. Cembalo Vazi there to the outside of Fabian Michel in the Audi, the uh, blue and white Audi number 42, is not only under attack, but has been attacked by the Santa Lock Audi that goes by, picks up position. One or two more running wide, and there's a big drama in the background, look, with a rather crumpled Porsche with lots of front damage, and that is Paolo Gnemi, and also off the road, Yacht Rapange in the Chevrolet, and I would rather fear that's going to be another inter interruption to the race, because those are two cars that are not going to be moved easily, especially at CY with the two damaged cars at the very end. Yaskari and more there, because some slowed and others didn't, and that was Jamie Caroline getting right into the back of Xavier Yoveras because the full course yellow was called for. Xavier Yoveras slowed, Jamie Caroline didn't, bang! And the net result is two more damaged cars, but the full course yellow, the drivers are given a countdown, 20 seconds, then 10, and then counted down to zero, and that's when you slow. As this is going to bring us, I would have thought, quite close to the pit window. Now, let's have a look there. Look, Yaveras has slowed right down. He's done exactly what's required. Full course yellow has been called for, and Jamie Caroline doesn't respond in time for whatever reason and gets into the back of him, and you can see the damage. I mean, it's worse than slow. The safety car comes into the pit lane. It's going to be 25 minutes when we get back underway, which effectively would be the second stint anyway, but we've yet to have the mandatory pit stop, so it's going to be very, very busy for 10 minutes when the pit window does open. In now comes Bailey Voice in. But we haven't had confirm. Oh, now the pit window does open, so he's timed that nicely. In he comes, so the race back underway. Antoine Potti storms clear, but down the pit road comes Bailey Boys in, and that could be a very, very good move to get that stop out of the way just as the race restarts then, because everybody else is going to be in a big, big scrum. To the outside line goes Joel Sturm, and he's going to run out of road at the chicane, and so does the leader. Antoine Potti gets it wrong and goes up the escape road. Joel Sturm straight on up the escape road. Now, where does that put him on the 
recovery. Let's see as the field goes out of the chicane. It's going to be the Toyota through, but where is Sturm? There he is. He's dropped a curve his second. Third now is Ruben Del Sartre. Fourth place is Gus Boas, and so down to fifth, Joel Sturm. An opportunity to dive in just as it opened, and that was a good move. Number 90 is being investigated for possibly overtaking under the yellow flag. That's Francesco Guerra. Now the pit window is now, as I say, open, and it is open for just under 10 minutes as the cars pour their way through the Varianti Ascari. So expect another uh, raft of people coming in at the end of this lap there. Volobazzi just ahead look of Marcus Lungstras. Chen Volobazzi has done a really good job as his own race. Into the pit lane does indeed now uh, come Joel Sturm. And he's not the only one to break the beam, I think, this time, because uh, also in behind him is Chen Volobazzi. And plenty more heading for the pit lane as well, including Francesco Guerra, including Fabian Michel. So it is Potti from Giacoma, from Ruben Del Sartre, one, two, and three. And of course, in the case of many of these teams, if you've got more than one car, you don't want them all in on the same lap. And if you're really savvy, you'll work out who your neighbours are and have a word and say, well, you know, if I bring my car in on lap X, can you bring yours in on Y? Because the last thing you need is to be hemmed in. Uh, and with 46 cars to cycle through a 10-minute pit window, it is perfectly possible that that can happen. It's at least only a driver team, British GT4 class champion. And uh, in the pit lane, there's Mass X. Chambolat-Vazi's BMW taken over now by Verke Vessler, and that will drop down a place or two relative to the United Autosports McLaren. But there are the should put him into the race lead now as Stefan Lemare rejoins. There in third place is going to be Max Busnelli. Fourth is Dean McDonald, and almost everybody else fifth, because just behind is number 12, the uh, BMW is lap of the race. You might not be surprised to know that, because I suppose to a degree, having taken over from Giacomo, and now Busnelli trying to break clear. It's the order of the top six. In fact, 7th and 8th are not that far adrift because at the back of this group is Beltoise 7th and Del Sartre, who has now become Canning, although it's still shown as Del Sartre on our timing page. Uh, he is in 8th place, Tom Canning, still running with them. So uh, that is still looking uh, as though it could be a change before the very end of the race. Pit window has now closed, just to confirm. So everybody should have done their mandatory stop if they're still at Supra, Gazoo Racing. And there, further back, Audi versus Alpine, as uh, Romain Ionetta is under attack from Vincent Beltoise. And Beltoise in the Alpine has got a mega toe because he's just done the fastest lap of the race. He's on the outside line, he's got past one, he's got past two. Brilliant move if he can secure this into the corner and he can't. He runs wide over the kerb, hops and skips. So back goes the BM, back ahead goes 77, Romain Ionetta. Two up and three down because Tom Canning goes through as well. And Beltoise, by going over the kerb, has done some damage. It looked great to begin with, getting past two of them, but he's gone with such force over those rumble strips, sleeping policeman-type kerbs, that it's done damage to the underside of the Alpine, and that car is struggling now to the end. So more disappointment for some continues in what's been a, a topsy-turvy race. Here's the replay. Look, Beltois in the Alpine, breaks as late as he dares. He gets past two, he turns in, but he's not going to make the corner, so he runs wide over the first kerb, but that's the one he hits very hard and then another kerb to bring him back onto the racetrack, and the net result is damage is done. So uh, Vincent Beltoise limps on, as here the race leader, Charlie Fagg, uh, comes uh, quickly to try to recap. Number seven, Aston Martin's time is under investigation, as there you see Becquerel Bessler just ahead of Romain Ionetta. Uh, of those that are being investigated for speeding in the pit lane, I don't think it's going to affect anybody. No, it's not as far as the... Uh, leading positions are concerned, so it's not one of our uh, main contenders, as it were. I know it affects individual crews, but it won't affect what we're looking at within this top eight as Charlie Fagg continues to hold sway up front. And Beltoise, having just done the fastest lap of the race, is now going to be a retirement with that damage. So five and a half minutes still to go. This is Max Busnelli hanging on a third place there, fifth. Becquerel Bessler, and he's just being able to keep Romain Ionetta at bay. Tap in the tail, the Audi tickles the BMW, tries to hurry it along, but Becquerel Bessler hangs on to position. And this is allowing Tom Canning the chance to close up as well in the seventh place. Aston Martin, there it is, the Mirage racing car through. Blanchemin versus Casalbon. Meantime, 
Bekre Besla is still uh, under attack here from Roma Ioneta as they wriggle their way up through the chicane. And behind them is Tom Canning, who can't quite make a move against them. He might be being savvy and just waiting to see if it ends in tears ahead of him rather than get caught up in it, but he's not being able yet to crawl all over the back of that sixth place Audi. So there is Bessler. Good run this actually because that car has so it'll be one more lap at the end of this. Through they come with still Bessler keeping Yonetta at bay and Tom Canning now starting to mount uh, another attack here. So there the Pro-Am leader Max Busnelli having taken over from Ivan Jacoma. And in the background, does Tom Canning start to make a move in that red, white and blue Aston Martin? He does. He comes up to have a go against the Audi or Romain Ionetta on the inside line, the Aston on the outside. So Romain, having taken over from Eric Clement, turns through the Parabolica. Tom Canning looks for the inside line there. He's been busy in British GT eSports these last few weeks. Now a real-world race for him. And he's right there on the back of the Audi as they come over the timing line once more. The Aston Martin has certainly got the grunt in a straight line. But has the BOP been kind to it? Let's see, because Tom Canning can't just drive past. He's going to have to try to make the move under braking for the chicane. The Retifilio beckons and he can't go through there. But a little mistake he's made by Becro Besta. Suddenly they all concertina arriving on the scene as well. Look, is Greg Gilver in the blue and white Audi that runs in eighth place there at the back of the queue. We're on the last lap of the race then as the cars accelerate their way up to the run round the Curva Grande for the 26th time final lap of the race and for third position it has not been resolved yet they are still together Max Busnelli still under attack uh, from the hard charging Dean McDonald side by side there the BMW Becker Besler second in Pro-Am third in Pro-Am is the car that he's trying to defend from Roma Ionetta who's all over the back of that BMW and the AM Cup is still just the Michel Blanchemont Audi ahead of Wilfried Casarbon. It may not end that way, but it's how it is at the moment. So right now, that BMW needing to be a cork in the bottle as they sprint down towards the Variante Ascari once more. Inside line, defensive line claimed by the BM. To the outside line goes the Audi. The clock hits zero now then, so the Winning, pouring over the line. There is Jim Pla up into ninth, going for eighth in the Mercedes as they come to the line. Third is Busnelli, fourth Dean McDonald, opened at least by the drivers. So just quickly have a look at the race results. Then a win for Bailey Boysen and Charlie Fagg, from Antoine Potti and Stefan Lemare, Ivan Jacoma and Max Busnelli in third place. Gus Bowes, Dean McDonald, fourth ahead of Chambord at Quasi and Bakare Basler. And then sixth, Eric Clement and Romain Ionetta. Ruben Del Sartre, then for second, up come. Chimbola Kabazi and uh, Bakke Besla. Turkey drivers with uh, an excellent result. Class winners. I'm coming for the throne.